Hello, I'm Alexis Gooden, Curatorial Research Associate at the Clark. One of the things I love about my job is spending time in storage, where I sometimes encounter the unexpected. And today I'm excited to share with you three small porcelain sculptures that particularly piqued my interest on a recent visit. The fortune teller, woman worker embroidering a red banner, and woman and child with fish were created following the Russian Revolution, about the time the Soviet Union was formed. They celebrate daily life under the new regime and were intended to convey political messages to a mostly illiterate population, although the expense of producing porcelain never made these works affordable to the proletariat. Porcelain tableware, small sculptures, and other luxury forms imported and made in Russia had long been enjoyed by Russia's elites. Empress Catherine the Great was fond of Sevres porcelain and commissioned pieces from this French manufactory, including this cup and saucer, part of a dinner service for 60. In 1917, following the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II, the Imperial Porcelain Factory in St. Petersburg was renamed the State Porcelain Factory. The factory had a new mandate to advance the goals of the government. Porcelain became a tool of Soviet propaganda. Natalia Danko designed these sculptures. She began working at the Imperial Porcelain Factory in 1914, but just five years later was running the sculpture department. She came up with ideas for figures and sculptural groups, which were modeled by fellow workers and sometimes painted by her sister Elena Danko. The sculptures helped tell the story of an emerging nation, often featuring people one would see on the streets, such as a wealthy young woman asked to pay a few coins for her fortune. In this work, a woman gazes admiringly upon her embroidery of a banner. The hammer and sickle, which represented the union of the industrial worker and the farmer, is vividly rendered in blue and gold against the red fabric. This woman appears a model of health, with rosy cheeks, neatly styled hair, and clean clothing. Her skill glorifies the state. In turn, this work brings fulfillment. Starvation is the subject of woman and child with fish. Holding prized food, the hungry child eats it raw. Her mother holds two more fish. One is wrapped in a newspaper, the Pravda, the voice of the Communist Party. Dating to 1922-23, this sculpture was made during a famine that ultimately claimed five million Russian lives. Grain was scarce, as was heating and cooking fuel. What is Danko's message? Is it that the Communist Party will provide, or that better days are coming? Does Danko suggest the vulnerable, like this woman and child, need the government's help? What surprises me most about these works is that they were acquired by Sterling and Francine Clark, probably right around the time they were produced, but certainly before 1955 when the museum opened. The Clarks admired 18th and 19th century porcelain, but they rarely bought anything contemporary, porcelain or otherwise. It's likely these small sculptures were bought in Paris from Alexander Popov. One of the Clark's trusted dealers, Popov sold them works of porcelain. A Russian emigre, he carried a large stock of imperial porcelain in his gallery. It's possible he also acquired Soviet productions, such as Danko's small sculptures, and sold them to the Clarks, who admired the unusual subjects. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual trip into the vault with me, and please join me again soon to learn about another treasure in our art storage.